Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Global Running Day. Welcome back. I'm Varun Sriram. For our next session, I'm joined from North Carolina by Zap Fitness elite runners Nicole DiMercurio and Tyler Pinnell. Hey, guys. Happy Global Running Day. Thanks for joining us. Hey, yeah, good to be here. Happy Global Running Day to you and everyone listening. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, I got to ask you, got to start off with both of you guys. Have uh, have you had your run yet today? And if so, uh, what did each of you do? Um, yeah, we got out this morning and it was, we both had workouts, uh, different workouts. I had a fart lick and then you had. I did um, seven by 1200 with a 300 pairing in there. Excellent. Excellent. So both of you guys have celebrated already and now you're here to share some knowledge with us. And, and we've got a pretty interesting topic today um, that we're going to explore with you guys. Uh, so Tyler and Nicole, I'll let you guys tell the story, but you guys are in a relationship and your fellow competitive athletes. Both of you guys are elite runners. Um, we're going to talk about uh, have phenomenal performances at the Boston Marathon this year, both finishing in the top 10. But I really want to explore, uh, you know, some of the ups and downs, the uh, the benefits and the challenges of, of being in a relationship with a, a fellow competitive athlete. And you know, it's something that a lot of folks, a lot of runners, uh, maybe not at the same level uh, as you guys, but but probably experience this push and pull when they're in a relationship with someone else who and, and they both share big goals. Um, so let's let's start there, Tyler and Nicole. Uh, Nicole, I'll give you the first word this time. Uh, in in your in your words, um, how did how did you and Tyler meet, and uh, how did how did this whole thing uh, get started? Yeah, so um, we met at the Peachtree Road Race, and, you know, I met him. I was like, oh, you know, he's fast. He's kind of cute. Um, you know, I didn't think anything of it. Um, but then he got on, in contact with me later, and I remember, um, you know, I was just checking my phone, you know, wake up, and like, I don't know, catch up on what you missed while you're asleep, which usually isn't much. And then I had, like, a message from him, and I remember <laughs> – I slept like right under this windowsill and I like kind of I jumped up and hit my head and I had like this huge bump for like a week but I was like super excited I, I don't know um so we went to dinner a couple times I um didn't live at Zap yet um but you know we we went to dinner um you know I guess I thought he was okay so we kind of um, <laughs> It just it just grew from there. How, how long ago was this? Twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. So so you guys have now had the experience for a few years of of, of being together and and both competing. Um, Tyler, from your perspective, um, was dating an elite runner, being together with an elite uh, a fellow elite runner, something that you'd ever thought about, something you had considered, or was it more like, hey, if it happens, it happens. Um, yeah, just kind of, that's just what I've always been. Just like, if it happens, it happens. Like it's, and I'm not going out and search, I guess. So yeah, I mean, but it's just good, you know, that we are both our runners because we both share, you know, similar, similar goals and ideas on, on how to live and what we want to do. You know, so sometimes the way this will manifest itself and you hear this in business is, you know, it, there's, of course, plenty of people that are in business together that are in relationships. But, you know, you hear certain things about kind of cautioning, mixing the two together. Now, for you guys, how much in your relationship is running and, and conversations about running and thinking about running center stage? And, and how much do you guys try to separate sort of the running aspect from your personal lives together? That's a good question. Um, you know, I feel like we do talk about running quite a yeah. bit, but um, you know, I don't. We don't focus on it, especially when we're not in practice or practice mode. Um, you know, if we're just eating dinner together, normally we'll be talking about something, and then it'll kind of grow into something about running, and then we'll go back to it. But I don't think we particularly mm -hmm. intend to talk about running if that makes any sense whatsoever. Absolutely, absolutely. It's part of your life, so it'll come up in the course of conversation, but it, it, it you know, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, do you guys bounce, you know, when, when you have goals, uh, when, when you're facing tough times and running, do you, do you guys bounce those things off of each other? Uh, or, I, I, you know, at Zap, um, for those who don't know, you guys are set up in a training environment where there's a lot of other athletes. Each of you, I'm sure, have your own group separate from each other. That you're training with on a day-to-day -day basis but but how much 
does did those things come up in terms of relying on each other for advice? Yeah, I mean, we both, you know, had some ups and downs, and I've been injured a bit in the past couple of years, and just, I mean, she has asked me about injuries and stuff, and she she hasn't been injured quite as much in her career, I mean, even going back to college and stuff, where I was injured a lot, and just, you know, things like that, and just, yeah, I mean, being, in, I mean, being encourageable to each other, and, you know, when you're feeling down because something hurts or whatever. And I think for me, um, you know, Tyler is really fast and I, there were a couple years there where I was really struggling and all I kept asking him was, you know, what did you do to be Tyler Pinnell and how can I apply this to my life? Because not every runner is the same and, you know, runners of every level know that. So, you know, he would be like, oh, this is what I did and this worked for me. And, you know, I would try to bounce off that in a way that would fit my life. But just having someone to you know, keep you focused and help you along, especially when you're like, man, I am just sucking it up out there and I need some help. You know, so much of what you guys go through with injuries, with with, you know, just what it takes to reach the level you're trying to reach, what what it takes out of your body. Um, do you find oftentimes that it's it's beneficial to say, hey, when I'm when I'm at my low moments or when I'm having a tough day, it's nice to have somebody who's been through that, you know, who who gets it, where it's not totally foreign to, you know, why is Nicole down because of this performance? Why is Tyler feeling this way because of this injury? You guys can relate to each other around that. How how much of a benefit have have both of you found that? Um, I mean, yeah, that's definitely beneficial. It's like we and just going through the same thing and knowing, you know, it's like she won't get that upset if I'm down for, you know, I had a bad workout or just felt terrible in a race because like, she's been there. And so she'll just like let it pass pass, and know that I'll be that back to like in my normal self, you know, on the, the next day or. Nicole, for you, um, you know, there might be a, there have been different times, say uh, it could have been either way, but where one of you's, you know, in a period where you're having breakthroughs or having good success, the other one may not be. Um, how do you balance that element where, you know, it's trying to be sensitive to what the other pe person's feeling, even if you're in a very different period of training? Yeah, well, I mean, of course, if Tyler's running well, I'm going to be excited for him. But there's a part of me that's like, man, why can't that be me? Like, you know, I'm with him, you know, we ha have basically the same training. Um, and I mean, I, I think it's just knowing that, just keeping in the back of your mind that everyone has those awesome periods, but everyone also has those down periods. And just being able to talk that through with Tyler and just saying like, you know, cause I'd say with our relationship, you probably had more breakthroughs than me. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but, it's just having that understanding there that it's like, hey, I'm excited for you, but I just ran awfully. Like, I, I don't want to talk about it. Like, I'm really excited for you. And I think that's important. So speaking of breakthroughs, you know, for both of you guys, uh, most recently in, in Boston, uh, the 2018 Boston Marathon, just two uh, crazy day out there, which I want to hear about uh, from, you know, folks who actually lived it running out there. But um really incredible performances of uh, both of you finishing uh, top 10 at the Boston Marathon. So, um, Nicole, maybe again, starting with you on this one, take us through that day from your expectations on what you thought you had in you going to the race. So I a little bit want to understand, like, did you surprise yourself at all with how you finished or is that what you expected out of yourself? And then just what was it like living through the insane wind and rain and <laughs> all sorts of madness? I mean, I look back on that and I'm just like, I cannot believe what we did. Um, I mean, anyone out there, I can't believe anyone just saw the weather that day. It was like, all right, let's just go. Um, but I did actually have to change a lot of what I wanted to do in the race. Um, I went in a, a couple weeks before with Pete and we had this time goal and I was like, you know, this course really plays well with where we train. I think that the hills are perfect. We've done a course preview. Like, I think I could run a PR on this course. And then, um, you know, despite Pete's warnings not to ch check the weather, as soon as that 10 day forecast came up, I checked it and it said rain. And I was like, it's fine. It's like 10 days out and it's like a 30% chance of rain. What, what could happen? And then the days kind of, 
crept in and crept in and you know <laughs> the night before we're dealing with 100% chance of rain and 100% of a headwind and I remember talking to Pete and I was just like Pete what do we do um he, and I mean he was very honest and I really do appreciate this he was just like we're gonna have to go for place like you cannot run your goal time in this weather and that's part of being a runner at any level is just knowing like your coach is going to tell you the truth and he's going to want what's the best for you. And actually our assistant coach or our, um, I'm sorry, the co-founder Zika Ray gave me the best advice of, of that day. And it was, you know, if you just run and you don't, you don't drop out of the race, you're going to place really well. And she was saying, you know, if you drop out of the race, you're going to be on the side of the road for, God knows how long. Uh, I mean, you're going to be there longer than you would what it take you to get to the finish line. Yeah. So that actually really encouraged me during the race because I just remember standing on that starting line going, oh, my gosh, like we really are about to do this. And it really is dumping and I'm freezing. <laughs> the race hasn't even started. Um, but I guess the whole race, I just that's one step I didn't have to take was what I kept telling myself was, you know, I made that step. Don't have to take that one again. I'm that much closer to the finish line. Just don't give up. Um, was, there a point there, where you, was there a point where you wanted to, was, was oh, there a point where you were considering that this, this isn't worth it anymore? Yeah. Oh my, oh my gosh. I can't even count how many times I was like, you know, it's fine. Like everyone's dropping out. Like I don't feel great. There was one point on the course where Pete, um, at the end of the race, when I finally got to talk, talk to him, he was like, were you crying? And I was like, I think I was trying to, but I didn't have any tears left, and I was in so much pain, and I was so cold. But That's you know. unbelievable. So when, when you crossed the finish line, and, and I don't know if you immediately found out that you were the sixth place um, woman finisher, or if that was a little bit later, but did you did you know, did you have a sense of, how well you were placing like as you were getting closer towards the finish line or did you not really know? I had no idea. I mean, in that race, like nothing made sense. Like I passed Molly Huddle. Like, I don't know. I, I assumed there's some, I, I had no idea what place I was in. Um, you know, I had passed Shalane like on the uh, down, um, just the stretch to the finish line. And I, I got done and people were saying fifth place, fifth place. But I ended up being fifth in the elite field, which is why I'm saying fifth. Yeah, yeah. I was overall sixth overall with time. So they were telling me fifth place and I can't hear anything. Like it's just like a ton of sound, the rain's distorting everything. So I'm like, all right, 15th. Or was that 50th? And then I, I just remember and then they were like, okay, we're taking you to drug testing. And I was like, they drug test the 50th person like what <laughs> and then I, it didn't occur to me until i got inside that it was actually fifth place and that's when i just broke into tears i was i could not believe it and amazing amazing and and you know uh, probably all the more rewarding considering what you were just describing what you went through and how deep you have to dig not to just drop out you know um that that's really cool to hear that from your own words and, and how that all played out um Tyler, similarly for you, um, you know, I would love to hear about your day. So you ended up finishing fourth place on the men's side. Um, similar to what I asked Nicole, I mean, what was the experience like being out there? How deep did you feel like you had to dig, you know, maybe even compared to other tough race experiences you've had? And then finally, what was it like when you realized, wow, I actually finished fourth place at the Boston Marathon? Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, it was very I mean, similar, just it was so cold and wet and just you never, you know, really got warm at all. And I mean, but I, fortunately, I had uh, I was running with Tim Ritchie for a lot of the race and really he helped me through and I helped him through a lot of unfortunately he ended up dropping out. But um, I mean, the first 17 miles, just like it was always Tim and I, we were trading off leads and we'd catch a group and then kind of leave that group behind. And, and it was just like, you know, I knew if. I almost couldn't drop out because like Tim was there still and like I just you know I don't know if he felt the same way but that's kind of how I felt that you know I have to be here to help Tim at least and um, eventually we got uh, into Newton Hills and um, right before that I mean I had some bad patches right before the hills and like I don't know if I if it's worth it you know and we caught another group and I started feeling better and I'm a good hill runner as well so we started going up the hills and I started feeling better and I was like all right I can do this and 
Um, I just, I wanted to have a good race. And so I just kept pushing. And I just remember the last like two miles, just my quads were frozen and just everything was just hurting. And I just was just let, I couldn't, I could hear the crowd, but it just was just a roar. I mean, it, for anyone that's run Boston in the last mile is just three, four people deep, even on as crappy of a day that was. And yeah, it was just like, I just kind of knew I just had to get to the finish and yeah. And I mean, when I crossed the line, I didn't know how well I did. Um, I saw my agent Ray Flynn and he, he told me Nicole was fifth or sixth. He didn't know. And I was pretty excited. I mean, I had no clue where I was and I mean, and I couldn't hear anyone in the crowd telling me or anything. And it wasn't until I got to the tent afterwards and someone's like, you're yeah, in fourth place. So I was like, no, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was like, I, I ran, it was just, it was just so slow. And I just didn't know what to think of it other than just, you know, I was glad to be done. <laughs> That's amazing. Like for, to hear from both of you guys uh, that, you know, even after the race kind of being surprised by how well you finished that, that that's such a cool, I, I didn't realize that, you both kind of had that experience. Um, so both of you talked about like digging deep. And of course, this is something we hear a lot. It's almost like synonymous with being able to run a marathon. But I, I wanted to understand that a little more. Like, what does that actually look like? Um, so Nicole, I'll start with you. And then similarly for you, Tyler, when you both allude to, I wanted to drop out, but I dig deep. Like, what does that look like mentally? Are, are you literally saying things to yourself in your mind? What, what are you doing in that moment that you describe as digging deep? Yeah, um, I'm just reminding myself how much work I've put in and not only how much work I have put in, um, how much work my coaches have put in, my sponsors have put in, um, the supportive people just really wanting me to do well. And if I just that day mm-hmm. said, man, you know, it's it's a little cold, it's a little wet, like, I'm tired. Like I felt like in a way I would be letting them down. Like the past few months I had been training the best I had in my entire life. And I wasn't going to get the time I wanted, but I really wanted that performance. And a, a big thing for me was I just, I, like I said earlier, I just kept saying, keep putting one foot in front of the other. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be hard and it's not going to look pretty. I mean, I see pictures from that race and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't know my face could look like that. Um, that's, <laughs> um, let's not show these to anyone, but I mean, it's basically what it looks like. It, it's just, it's not pretty and it is hard. And mentally you just have to keep repeating things to yourself. Like I can do this and just phrases as simple as that. Um, you know, uh, Pete and I always talk about, we have one word to just repeat to yourself every time. And for me, that it's just, I'm tough. And even, even when you don't feel tough, when it's just pouring rain and you can see when the next gust of rain is going to hit your face, you know, just fake it until you make it. Just say, I'm tough. I'm tough. And then eventually you'd be like, okay, I am tough. I'm 20 miles. (laughs) So I have to be tough. That's a cool, that's a great take home though. So you're, you're literally finding that phrase that you can say, and for you, it was, I'm tough. So actually finding something specific to say versus just thinking to yourself, I'm tough. You know, there, there's something there where you actually articulate it that could help you believe it. Um, really interesting, Nicole. What about, what about for you, Tyler? What, what does yeah. digging deep mean and look like for you? I mean, it's very similar. I had a similar fade. Mine was stay tough. And I mean, Pete's big on like, us find a, one or two word mantra just to repeat and maybe maybe you have two or something for a, something as long as a marathon like the you know the first 18 miles it's you know stay relaxed or something maybe to focus on your breathing or whatever but um just like repeating that over and over again and just you know reminding yourself you know they you know you have a lot of people supporting you and that you want to run the best for them you want to run the best for yourself it's like we've put a lot of work into you know a marathon is just that marathon's different it's not like a 5k you can go run every other weekend and you know if you have a bad race it's like oh well you know i've got two weeks and you can go run a great race in two weeks it's that just doesn't happen with the marathon it's well i got six months so i can run a marathon again really and try and go at it so you know you well, want to try and have a good one on on each um yeah and i was gonna say that's a that's a good interesting perspective because of course you know for, for you guys uh training for a marathon at an elite level what it takes out of the body, it, it, you know, it's, you, you guys aren't able to bounce back and run a marathon two weeks later, like, you know, somebody who may 
perhaps, you know, recreational runner or adult runner who may have that opportunity. So I guess from that standpoint, maybe staying in the race and not dropping out, there's even that additional motivation, like you talked about all the work that you've put in and it's kind of for this moment, or you're going to have to wait to have it again. Mm -hmm. um, for, so I want to just jump on to our last um, topic uh, with both you today and really appreciate your time, um, you, you were talking about, you know, the the sayings that you say to yourself and kind of, um, I think that's a great take home point for a lot of the people listening in the audience. And at Zap Fitness, you guys have the unique um, kind of situation where you're training in a group with a lot of fellow elite runners, but you also have adult runners coming to Zap, um, you know, for running camps and you have chance to interact with them and pass on some knowledge to them. So I was curious, um, when you have adult runners coming to Zap, what are the types of things that they want to learn from you guys? Um, I want to let folks in our know, uh, audience know who are loving the uh, lovely mood lighting that we've got right now that uh, Nicole and Tyler are dealing with some up and down uh, sun coming through the window. So it's it's no problem at all. But but yeah, guys, for, for, for you when adult campers are coming to Zap um, and trying to pick your brain, like what do you find that they want to know from you guys? Yeah, I mean, it's it kind of depends on the camper too. I mean, there's I mean, our coaches and um, people that, you know, our facility managers and stuff, they do talks on training and stuff. So they help them with almost the like, kind of, I guess, technical aspect. And they do have a, a session on just like um, the psychology of running and, you know, mental training and stuff. And But I mean, that, a lot of it is I think our campers just kind of love come and just like, you know, almost schmooze with us to some degree. And I mean, we enjoy it too. And uh, just to, you know, hang out and, I mean, they kind of. I think some of the people who, if they haven't been, to, if they haven't been to camp before, they realize that oh, we're not really that much different than you know. We just run a little quicker, and we don't. Maybe we maybe don't have a nine to five job, but um, you know, we're just kind of normal people. And but yeah, I mean, I think they they do look to you know try and see what things we um they can take away from us, just like what mental tricks or something, because. You know they're they have goals too and a lot of them are trying to qualify for boston you know get their bq that's a real big one but just a lot of them are just you know that want to just keep improving yeah i, I think, think yeah go ahead Nicole. sorry no no go ahead i'm gonna add to that um i think just as runners we all kind of want to know how to be the best runner we can be regardless of what level you're training on i mean you could be at any level and you could be the best runner at that level, at your personal level, because everyone's personal level is different. And I think they come to camp and they want to figure out how they can be the best runner they could be, regardless of how that compares to other people. And I think that's a really interesting aspect, especially with our campers, I would say. Um, you know, they're very personable people. Like, obviously, they want to run fast, but they are they tend to be more interested in how they can be the best runner what and that doesn't always mean fast it just means the healthiest um in the i don't know just I don't well know. i was just said that's that's kind of a special aspect of running right because it's um i think what you said captures a lot of it if if people are trying to get the best out of themselves then there's a lot they can take away from what you guys do even if they're not running the same pace as you like i look at that mental trick you said as the perfect example everybody is trying to dig deep when they're running a marathon and you know for some people it might be digging deep five hours into a marathon for you guys it's digging deep maybe two hours into a marathon but that trick is still transferable um mm -hmm. you know something else that's transferable that i know uh, you guys have done a great job at zap introducing to a lot of your uh, adult runners is is the fueling aspect and some of what you guys do from a nutritional standpoint um and one of the things we've been able to introduce um, at camp and that you guys have both used as part of your training is you can um so Nicole, starting with you, um, kind of how have you found success implementing UCAN as part of the training? Maybe I know there's different products, but maybe kind of your favorite way that you've found to use UCAN uh, thus far in your training. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I will always say this, but I'll have a hard workout and I am looking forward to that chocolate protein shake after like, I, even when, like I said, I'm digging deep. I'm like, okay, well, I get a chocolate little chocolate protein shake after this and that that hypes me up <laughs> um i'm also a, a, i mean not only does it taste good it does actually help me recover um and i mean it's amazing it, it it refuels me i feel full and then i go on to my next thing and i don't have to worry about that crash that sometimes happens after a hard, that usually happens after a hard workout um 
and while that's my favorite thing, I use the um, the berry pre-starch before every before our hard workouts, and you know, it it gives me a mental strength knowing that I'm taking something that's going to sustain my energy and that I'm not going to crash. I mean, especially when it comes to marathon training and now getting back into shape. Oh my gosh, I know I'm not going to have <laughs> I'm not going to have that crash when. I'm starting to realize now that the crashes come really hard when you're getting back into shape and I don't have to worry about it that much now. And that's really nice. That's, that's awesome. You know, it's funny uh, that story you told about looking forward to that chocolate protein shake a couple of uh, years ago after Meb one Boston, um, we were lucky enough my, myself and my colleague Peter to join him for the uh, Kelly Michael show. He was in New York. He was interviewed on that. And uh, Kelly Rip asked him, you know, how do you mot stay motivated at the end of the marathon? What do you look forward to? She's like, I would be looking forward to a margarita or a big burger. And he was like, well, I'm craving my chocolate. You can. So you're in good company. <laughs> uh, Tyler, how, how about for you? Um, similar question to Nicole. What have you yeah. kind of found that you've enjoyed the most uh, about using you can um, or, or your favorite way to use it, I would say? Yeah, I mean, I the chocolate milkshake uh, protein shake afterwards is that's what that's I use that a lot and I mean that's great for us it's like we're we, we're about 20 minutes from where we do most of our runs in the morning and so you know you can get something right in your stomach and that has some protein and carbs and you know maybe we can go back and do core or something and not have to get food right away and it's great for that and, um, and I really like the um, electrolytes it's just they're you know a little simple packet you can just throw in and shake it up and Yep, right there. Right there. <laughs> yeah, and they, I enjoyed that. I like those a lot, and they're just, they're good, and they taste good, and yeah. Um, I also like the, um, it's like, I guess, they're not for the protein ones, but like the peach uh, bars. That's yep. Those are really good, and I, those are a good, like, afternoon snack for a little pick-me-up or, you know, to just keep some, get some calories in you and to keep, hold you over between lunch and dinner and, so, and I'd say overall with you can, you know, everything that Tyler and Nicole are both talking about, it, it all comes back to this idea of the slow releasing energy that you can provide. So when Nicole's talking about not crashing Tyler, when he's talking about holding you over, it's really the, that's what you can's offering you. It's that slow release of carbohydrate instead of that quick sugar spike. Um, well guys, we are almost at our time for this session, but I did want to close this out by asking each of you want a final question, given that it's Global Running Day today. Um, so, Nicole, we'll start with you. Um, what do you think the most significant thing running has contributed to your life has been? Um, being in the sport of running, how do you feel it's helped you overall in your life the most? It's helped me with my confidence. Um, I, I started running in high school, and I was not a very confident person. And, you know, the littlest thing would make me nervous, um, you know, and then race after race, you have to learn to put yourself out there and no one's going to laugh at, I mean, they might laugh at you like after a race, if you do some, if you like, if you, I don't know, go out too fast. I mean, but you learn that no one's talking about that in two weeks, no one cares. And, you know, it helped. I don't know how to explain it other than it's just has been, really been a confidence boost, mm -hmm. like especially in a position like we have at Zap, you know, you have to be confident in yourself. You're constantly talking to people and people know if you're kind of shy. And uh, I mean, it's really helped me grow as a person. Um, and that's really important to me. <laughs> great, great perspective. Tyler, how about for you? Yeah, I mean, it, that's a similar thing in high school. I mean, I would get so nervous. I just would run terrible. and. I mean, part of it, I've almost learned just, you know, it's a, it's a race and, you know, I want to do well, but, you know, if, if you don't do well it, there, you know, hopefully will be another chance and there should, you know, ideally there is another chance. And, but I mean, one thing, you know, it's on just like a financial side, even it's like, it got me an education, you know, for very, very inexpensive education. And because I had a scholarship to college and now it's my life and that's how I make my money. And, and it's, it's a great way to do that and I enjoy it. <laughs> well, that's great guys. Yeah. I think both those things are, are really, you know, significant things. They've been opportunity to get an education and then confidence like you both talked about. I mean, that's, that's such a challenge for so many people. So for running to be able to instill that in folks, I mean, it shows a huge, huge value and benefit of running. Um, 
But Tyler and Nicole, I want to thank you guys so much for your insight. Uh, we kind of hit on a whole range of topics here. It was fun to be able to pick your brain. And um, yeah, really appreciate all the support. Really excited for both of you guys for the great performance in Boston and excited to see what's to come next. Yeah, thanks, Martin. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. And if you guys want to check out Tyler and Nicole, we got to do it. We live in the social media age. How can people learn more about you guys, find out more about what you guys are up to? Um, for me, just on Instagram and Twitter is at Tyler Pinnell. Also, uh, TylerPinnell.com. I have a website, so and that has links to everything and Facebook and all that. So that's that's probably the easiest way. But great. How about you, Nicole? Yeah, for me, it would be for me it would be instagram at ndmerk not nicole dmerk that was my account in high school and it has one like really weird picture that's like completely over filtered so please don't follow that account or give it any support um so it's just ndmerk um but my twitter is nicole dmerk and that's full of some quality tweets as well awesome. as my schedule <laughs> <laughs> love it so uh to tyler and nicole thank you guys so much you guys can definitely Stay tuned with what they're doing more. Uh, we will be taking a little break now and our final session of the day with Coach Greg McMillan will be in two and a half hours. We'll see you then. Thanks guys, have a great day. Thanks, Bye. Bye.